Matthew, I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to put you in an awkward position, you know, say as much or as little as you want. It, I felt like, you know, very often when people run for president, it really does not benefit their public image. A lot of people who have run for president have said you're going to be under an X-ray. It's going to expose mm-hmm. everything about you. And I, so Cornell West's run for president, I don't think has benefited his public image oh, that's at where all. You're going. I, think I thought you were going to ask him, is there a DUI in your past that you're yes. afraid will come out if you we, win? Is we have right talking? here a ticket from Ulster County <laughs> yeah. with your name on it. You know, actually, um, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm at, I actually do have some stuff in my past like everyone else. Benefit I've had is I've had uh, some security clearances because I was in the Marine Corps and State Department. And I've asked the investigators, hey, can you see that stuff? And, you know, uh, if they've been expunged and uh, they say, right, no, we right. can't. So hopefully for me, you know, that stuff is going to remain hidden. But go ahead. Yeah, well, I, well, I'm, I- I'm going to get yeah, to sorry how, to derail how, your question, how many Russell, ways you're able to kill a man with your times. index yeah, finger from your, from your time in the Marines. But uh, <laughs> you know, that's a unique quality in a candidate. Um, but I think it also for a lot of people exposed the green party in a very negative light Mm -hmm. insofar as people got some insight into what the process was the green party did not benefit from that whole fiasco so what is your experience with running inside the green party because from outside it seemed like it was very dysfunctional very sectarian very riven by identitarian movements according to some of what we heard um it seemed like you have, uh, you know, there, there, there is this kind of split between an economic left and a more identity focused left. And it seems like you have some of that playing out in the green mm-hmm. party. It yeah. just felt like, wow. You know, once you pulled the lid off, you said, oh my God, what the hell's going on over there? And it was yeah. all very vague. It was all, if you weren't inside, it was very hard to see what it was, but when they're still saw, not forthcoming about it, like neither Cornell nor Jill Stein have ever really said how that broke down. Yeah. And I actually don't, I don't have too much visibility on that either. Uh, I, as an outsider going into the green party though, I will say, I saw what you're talking about, Russell, and I experienced it to a degree. Um, and I'll say that because I want the Green Party to prosper and they need to address these issues that you're talking about. Um, one of the things was just the, 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 there was a lack of, you know, a hierarchy. There was a lack of order. There was a lack of just ability to make decisions. You have like this 12 person steering committee. So no one, so decisions can't be made in a timely fashion. And then no one is ever held accountable. Right. Because you've got 12 right. people making a right. decision or within all the other committees and and, and, and and working groups and everything else that are supposedly making decisions. Well, I mean, that's just one of the uh, you know, there's a lot of benefits to horizontal leadership. But in terms of, of making decisive decisions right. in terms of and there is also uh, a, a, this ineffectual consensus that always had to be achieved. And, you know, there's this idea that we have to have consensus on everything. Right. And that's not exactly how it works. I mean, you could see I would point to and people who are in unions will tell me, hey, it's not that simple. But I would point to say how unions will be organized where, yeah, you have annual elections and you put people in charge of the mm-hmm. union and then you hold them accountable or hold them responsible. That's the way it is for most things. In fact, corporations are, are, are run that way in a degree, right? You have shareholders who elect board members. It doesn't work that way. Right. Practicality, right? It's, it's corrupt and it's rigged, but the idea is there. And I think within a lot of organizations on the left, you have this desire to have this horizontal leadership, to have this consensus. And it really becomes one you don't have, you have no accountability then. So if somebody is doing poorly, if somebody is making mistakes, if somebody is has a narcissistic personality disorder, right, you know, and, and actively harm, harm, causing your organization harm, it's very difficult to hold that person accountable then. Uh, right, and right. the other thing, too, is that you, you, there's no timeliness in your decision making. You know, I mean, I could tell you there are things that, uh, uh, well, for example, when I was running, uh, the uh, one of the heads of the railroad unions, people go remember, go back to 2022, railroads were going to go on strike. Yeah, this is a yeah. big issue in the fall of 2020. And one of the head, one of the heads of the railroad unions, I can't remember which one, uh, said, we, we, we need to stop voting for Democrats. We need to start voting for independents and third parties. 
And the Green Party, as far as I could tell, was unable to get it together to call him and say, hey, let's oh, talk. Right. <laughs> you know, because the decision, the, right. You know, all the, you know, in a timely manner. Right. Maybe they, right. maybe a month afterwards they had had this meeting of this committee and then this sub working group met. And then. Right. And, and, it, and it's again, I understand the idea you want to have you want to have consensus. You you are a, a, a populist party, a, demo, a democracy based right. party. But that yeah. doesn't mean that you can't have a legitimate hierarchy. Uh, that is empowered to make decisions on behalf of the membership and then the membership then holds accountable. And I just saw that that fundamental pro process not there. And then, as you said, there are other splits between different sectarian groups within the party, you know, and then you have different personality problems. I think you have an issue as well where um, you, you know, I, I could go on at length about this, but uh there needs to be a, a, a professionalization within the party, right? You know, one, I think there's a culture that for decades, the party has not been very successful. And you, the party also takes on a culture then of, we can never do what the other parties do because we don't have their money. And so that it is dismiss mm -hmm. any ideas right. around the basis right. of that. Okay. And then so there's it becomes other- like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It like a, it's like a culture of defeatism. Right, right. Right. Give an example. You know, you, you, you had somebody come in and say, hey, we need to do this on a website. And oh, we can't do that. We don't have the money to, to, to do that. Right. Without even right. looking at right. what's being recommended. And it's no, they're just saying change the black and white photos to color photos. They're not talking about, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> right. buying your own Amazon cloud server. It could or be a sitcom. Like you could really make a sitcom about this. Like, the it inner really, you know, and, of a, and it, of I think it does. Upstart because, third party. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it does. It, it, but the, the reality, the other thing, too, is I don't want anyone to get me wrong. There are incredible people within the Green Party. There are really oh, sure, great yeah. folks, right? I mean, so anything I say here, the criticism is because the, we need the Green Party and it needs to prosper, right? And it needs to grow. And in order to do that, it needs to get its own house in order. Because I think what people saw happen with Cornell West last summer was damaging, not just to Cornell West. And I'm a guy who, look, I saw Cornell West in like 92 or 93 came to my college and spoke. And that was that was a big deal for me. That was one of those yeah. life changing events to meet for me to see him speak in person. He was probably it was probably I'm assuming he was on. I, mean, I know he was on his uh, uh, tour for his book Race Matters, you know, and um, that was a big deal for me. Um, and, and so then to see this man enter into the Green Party and then leave. Uh, mm -hmm. is very troubling for not just for me, but for a lot of others. So right. you say, how right. do you how do you get this in order? Uh, and then thankful we have Jill Stein. God bless Jill. You know uh, that she was able to, to to enter in and take on the mantle once again. Uh, you know, but uh, we're not going to have Jill forever. Uh, and many people would say as well that like it, it doesn't do a party good if you don't have a fresh variety, a fresh uh, 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 diversity of leadership that is able to you know to take on these roles so uh yeah i mean it, it is I, I think it's important for these conversations to be had uh because otherwise you don't fix what's wrong yeah Go well, ahead, well frankly I, I i feel like some some of what we see okay so you know i, t I talk a lot with our our marxist leninist communist friends i myself do not count myself as one of them but they do have some good points that do overlap with a lot of my observations. I think a big part of the problem with the left generally, and I think you see this distilled in or, uh, organizations like the Green Party, like I know they're dissimilar, but they're similar in certain ways, DSA, is after the 60s, you really had the new left took leftism away from economics, away from mm -hmm. class, and towards yeah. these very campus, university-based, identitarian politics. This is how you wind up. I don't know if you saw it with that you know, viral video about people not clapping at the DSA convention. This is how you wind up with, with yeah, they had a whole thing. You know, there are some people who are hearing sensitive, so, so, you know, clapping, we really shouldn't clap. Okay, yeah. So, so I, I think you wind up, 
you know, this this is this is this is what the communists will say to argue for their political project, and it's the one thing I I really can't disagree with. They're the only ones who ever beat the capitalist class. That's true. Right. It's true. They are the only ones who ever beat the capitalist class. And if you look at these successful left revolutions, you know, these motherfuckers were not taking votes about whether they're allowed to clap. When there are really no working people involved in a left movement, it just it becomes cosplay. It turns into right. cosplay. It's well, like Cornell just doing picked this D &D. academic to run with him. He picked this academic to run with. Like you need some working class representation on the ticket. No, anyway, sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Right. You know, I mean, I I agree with with, with all of what's being said. A absolutely. And I think what you have too, when you have people coming to the Green Party, uh, they're interested in universal health care. They're interested in a living wage. They're interested in a Green New Deal. Right. They see these things that 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 they their communities need, and they know the Democratic Party is never going to do that. That's why they've moved to the Green Party. Right, and then right. they're hit with things other than that. And there's also a tremendous amount of, uh, again, ident identitarian uh, gatekeeping that goes right. on. It's almost like you show up and you have to take a test. And if you don't score 100, yeah. uh, you're not really welcome here. Right. And that can be really off-putting, particularly when you're not seeing success. So then it comes mm -hmm. down to this issue, is, is this worth my time? Right? Exactly. Is it worth my right. time to be involved right. in this where... I've got to watch my language all the time. I agree with everything you're saying, but just because I didn't say it exactly correctly, right, I'm right. going to get in trouble, right? I mean, right. so you have that dynamic that's occurring. It's a real dynamic. And, you know, then then you also see that, okay, there's no resources here. We're doing everything. It's like we're, we're, we're in arts and crafts here. We're making our signs with crayons on, 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 on you know. Uh, on paper, uh, which, okay, that's that's one thing, but then you don't see the success and you don't see the building of the success. You don't see like, okay, look, last year, five years ago, we had X amount of members. And then three years ago, we had Y. And now we're at Z. You know, you right. don't see that either. And so people put that all together and they say, this just isn't worth my right. time. You're not, we're not dealing with the things we need to be dealing with. I feel like I'm being uh, I'm being challenged to maintain some type of very strict uh, identity that I, if I don't hit the orthodoxy exactly right, I'm going to be in trouble. Uh, but then also, too, you just don't see the, the is this worthwhile for me to be a part of or should I move into something else? And that's why I think it's, it's, it's frustrating for people in the third party spectrum to look and see these other leftist left wing organizations uh, that can get people out in the streets that are, uh, um, you know, doing charity or direct action or whatever you want to call it, actual community work. And then, but why can't we tap into that? And where's that connection? And why hasn't this occurred in the 40 years of the Green Party that you've built these things? Right. You know, I mean, when I, when I would go, when I went to a, a fight for 15 rally on May Day, on May 1st, uh, as a candidate, and the people in, in Durham, North Carolina, when they said, you're the first person from the Green Party we've ever met, you know? Wow. Yeah, um, right. You know, that's okay. The Green Party has been in the state for 20 years and the fight for 15 people are telling me they've never met some. <laughs> Don't know who you are. Before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So you do. And again, I know, I mean, I'm, it, 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 I say this because I want to see the Green Party uh, do better because we need the Green Party. So that's why I'm willing to, you know, be critical like this. Please clap. Yeah.